hearts and minds clear? Yeah, what's wrong? All right, so we will call this meeting of the Government Operations Standing Committee of Council to order. <coughs> uh, welcome, everyone. We're going to see if we can get in and get out. Uh, we don't have any papers this evening. We do have some board vacancies. Um, not much to work with. Uh, so, we do have two presentations from illustrious, illustrious presenters, uh, none the least being Mr. Ron Jordan um, at Vanta Strategies, who will tell us about this upcoming legislative session. Actually, Mr. Chairman, the purpose of me being here is to walk you <coughs> through the process that I would like for us to use and going through what is a growing list uh, a, a large and growing list of legislative requests. Uh -huh. um, it's running probably near 10 pages right now. Oh, oh. And uh, the staff is, it's pretty darn long. And the staff is doing yeoman's work and trying to keep up with it all and kind of flesh out each one that's put in there. Um, I will tell you in, in perusing the list that um, some of them are, uh, is, I'll be blunt because you pay me to be blunt, or pipe dreams. Right. Uh, and we're going to need to sort through all that on Monday. So we're going to uh, do a little culling process. You're going to have to do a lot of culling. A lot of, a lot of culling. <laughs> so what I've got, as you remember over the last few years, we've used this process to decide yeah, yeah. what's important and what's not. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so as we go through the Monday, what I would suggest is that we score them using this, and we'll have to make a couple of passes, make a first pass, get rid of the, the, the list, all, identify all the fours, and then come back and start talking about the threes and the twos and the ones, and get the, down to a more manageable list. Because in addition to the items there, that's on the current council list, remember we're going to have stuff from the administration. And I think you all would like to walk into the dinner with the legislative delegation and say with a straight face, these are our priorities, mm -hmm. and not have them look at you all and say, have you lost your mind? Uh, what about schools? Are we doing schools combined too? Schools will be combined. Schools is working on a parallel track. Their, um, their list is, they, the school board members have their list now. It's uh, a little bit shorter, considerably shorter than, than the one you all are working with, and they're actually going through prioritizing stuff now. Uh, and those are due back to me Monday, and then we'll, we'll work on, on their list. So we're working on parallel track. And that's something else you might want to think hard about is if the schools are going to include an item in their package, you want to repeat it in yours in an effort to keep it short. Mm -hmm. Probably reasonable. Questions, anyone? Comments, anyone? And you've got an idea, you've just got in your packet, you want to flip through real quick. On page four, this is the this is last year's <coughs> and, and how we structured it. And I propose to you that we structure it in a similar manner. And then you go back over to page seven. And this is just a, the short list. The, 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 the revised list, which Ms. Davis is working on, has gotten considerably, considerably long. Double this, she said. And those are, that's the stuff so far that we've gotten from um, council members. And haven't, touched, but haven't heard from all council members yet. Right. Mr. Jordan, if I were uh, going to you know, tell you a priority, I think the biggest priority was the uh, discussion that I've had with regards to pilot. Uh, and I found it interesting that Mr. Raposi, the delegate of Raposi, did not realize how short-funded the city of Richmond was in the pilot program. So we have a lot of cultivating to do in that conversation. We're going to have to get our delegation uh, 
up to speed on that one because I think if, uh, given the fact that, you know, I spoke with Ms. Bridges yesterday and she was telling me about they've already started the budgeting process for schools for next year and they're already talking about a $19 million shortfall coming out of the blocks. And so with that being said, it tells me that, you know, this is going to obviously be at the top of the pot. And I don't know what y'all are hearing, but that's what I heard when I met with Ms. Bridges yesterday. I think it was 16 is the number I saw. I heard 16 is the Okay, well, I still a big number. A million here, a million there. And and we've looked at the pilot before, and one of the things that you can't divorce from the pilot issue is the, and I'll say this because you pay me for your advice, is the city, the city, you can't ignore the pilot, you can't deal with the pilot issue without also dealing with the issue, the issue of how you deal with tax exempt, non-profit tax exempt entities, whether you're exempting them. Because we have to, we have to be consistent in the argument to the state that you're not paying your fair share, but we're making all these other groups who we could give non-tax status to pay their well, fair share. Well, consider, considering the General Assembly exempted a good portion of them in the, in the, uh, in, in the statute. Well, I think Virginia Museum is a good example of one they went back yeah. and did that. Yeah. yeah, so I'm, I'm saying this is one of those discussions where you go, in, you go into the, to the code, Virginia code, and there are many right. buildings that reside or organizations that reside in the city of Richmond, and they are specifically exempted by the General right. Assembly before we ever touched it. I agree, and, it, and that may be a, another way we can talk more about it. The best way to approach the issue may be to, rather than simply get the state to pony up more money, which is not highly likely, would be to tinker with the statute and, re and well, remove I some would. of the stuff that's non that's <coughs> become more profit-making. And I'll use just an example, the hospital. Yeah. It's a, it's, it's a business entity now, trying to get some of that stuff Reclassified as well, correct as a cash cow. And, and, and my, my point is, is that um, when I was looking at the nonprofit discussion, the concern that I had was always the small organizations that are like Boaz and Rue, mom and pop operations that are trying to get on their feet. And we looked at, we took a run at this and realized that. Um, that we could not have a partial exemption unless it went through the General Assembly twice and was put on the ballot as a constitutional or, or another, I'm not sure exactly the right statement there, but it had to go through two separate General Assemblies and then be put on the ballot and ratified by the, by the voters of Virginia. And when that came back, I knew I had a better chance of winning the lottery and we went the other direction. But at the end of the day, I'm all ears in trying to figure out a way to balance this. Uh, I have no trouble saying to the larger organizations that are residing in the city, a pilot is a reasonable conversation. But, um, but where, I, where I do have the problems is, is the, these smaller organizations that are literally struggling to get, to get on their feet. And, uh, and, and you know, so I'm, I would love to see something in a very realistic manner put together that would allow for us to maybe close some of these gaps. One of the one of the advantages of getting the, the list really when it's down is then me and the staff can get together and we can and, and with and you you all individually and discuss once we've got the issues down, what's the best strategy to tackle that issue. And that's like that groups too, whether it's the pilot or whatever, the new, more money that we want out of the state, if we don't have a place we want to take it from, we're going to have a hard time getting it. So we need to be thinking about in terms of maybe, okay, maybe in, maybe we don't increase the pilot, but we begin to put a user fee on nonprofits. I'm just saying. Yeah, I understand. Just saying, we well, just the, the to just said we want X amount. The question, 99% of the time, is, okay, where do you want me to take it from? Just like we would say in our own budget, you want this, 
Where, where do I get it? Where do the I get it? The national trend so. has been to, you have a default in state law, but then the local locality <coughs> uh, negotiates with the nonprofit. And, and they're big nonprofits. It's like private colleges, hospitals, stuff like that. They negotiate a pilot agreement. I mean, University of Richmond's a good example. Uh, Virginia Union's a good example of, of, of private universities that reside in the city of Richmond that, in fact, have receive a tremendous benefit from us. Ms. Ali's trying to get in. Yeah. Just to say that um, Mr. Jordan was correct that it's been a little challenging for staff to try to whittle this list down. We, um, I promised you to get some information relative to all the separate items to provide us a bit of information. And it's been challenging because many of the items that are on this list were just thrown out there. We didn't really have the foundational information to go with that. So staff has been working hard, um, particularly led by Ms. Davis, in terms of trying to come up with some information so that as we get this list together and prepare for Monday, you'll at least have an idea of what, I guess, the requester was intending as a result of possible legislation. So you should have that list by tomorrow. I'm going to give that to Mr. Jordan as well so that we prepare for Monday. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Bless you. Thank you, Ron. Just, just one thing in regard to budget. The state budget, and, and probably haven't had a present, haven't had a presentation to you on state budget stuff since last session. State budget is going to be really being flux this year, and it's all driven by what's going on at the federal level. If the feds, if the Congress comes back, and this is not a partisan statement, does what they're supposed to do, then they deal with the issue of the fiscal cliff and the sequestration. <coughs> Um, but if they don't, or if they just punt it yep. for another for another six punt down the road for another six months or a year, it's going to continue to cause uncertainty in the economy, and that's going to affect the state's economy, which is going to roll downhill on the rest of us. Okay. Question of your contract: <laughs> Has that been established? What is the status? <laughs> I'm I heard I heard you were gratis this year. I don't need <laughs> I don't need any specifics. I just need to know the status of that procurement process and where it is. We're in the process of going through that and looking at the proposals. A decision will be made. We actually must make a decision about it end of October, so a new contract right. will be signed. Right. My contract's in place till you know. I yes. Know. Okay. Right. That's what I'm doing. Right. Okay. So we're well represented. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. As you remember, we put money in the budget for this. <laughs> yeah. I won't leave that alone. Yeah, we did. I mean, I, I remember that. Yes. Yeah. yeah, because we were talking about why wasn't it split a third, a third, and a third. And yeah. <laughs> Mr. Dela. Yes, sir. And his trustee aide and assistant is here. Don't worry, we'll get the money. <laughs> Welcome. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon. To you Hello. both. Good afternoon. Good to see you all. Nice to As you all know, uh, uh, the committee's work plan uh, did a little twist, and we decided that we would uh, uh, bird dog the audits that have been conducted, um, yet we're still open uh, with regard to recommendations. Sure. Uh, and so we need to sort of uh, uh, monthly get a status of how we're faring with regards to closing those recommendations and realizing savings and or some hopefully uh, positive impact. And so. Uh, this is our second session. Second session, yes. And we're happy to hear what you bring up. Uh, in the previous session, we went over some recommendations that was made that were made in public works. Today, we're going to go over some of the recommendations that were made in the finance department. Mr. Lowe, you have to know that this is an impact on page 10. Okay, thank you. Staff report. 
Lily will go over the first four. Eleven. First four recommendations and I'll go over the remaining sets. Okay. All right, well, good afternoon. Um, the first one is uh, an audit that was done in 2004. Uh, there's one recommendation that remains open, uh, which deals with uh, when you start a business in the city, uh, the business that will estimate uh, their gross receipts or their sales for the first two years, and then um, on the third year, then they would uh, do the actual and report to the city the actual. Since the, when we start at the, when they start the business, they don't know how much revenues they're going to get. It's an estimate. Uh, so during this audit, uh, basically uh, the recommendation was to find a, an automated way to flag those accounts. When we have a, a business who is brand new and has <coughs> estimated their revenues to when it comes to the third year that we can go back to it and see whether they have reported their actual figures. Um, could be understated, could be overstated. So it's a way to make sure that any revenues that are due to the city are received. It's a part of the internal audit function, I take it, um, yes. Yes. of the Department of Finance. It's a tax audit function. That, yeah. Uh, that's not out of your office to do. No. That's the tax audit section to do. Is that yes. correct? That is correct. Okay. Uh, this particular item does have a revenue impact even today because uh, in, in a recent audit, uh, we did find that this is still not being done. So, so if I understand this, what's happening, I start a business and I say my gross revenues are going to be $10,000 the first year and they, the city does the B poll tax based on that okay. and then no one ever goes back to see whether or not it needs to be adjusted upward or downward mm -hmm. and as a result, <coughs> it, I go into the second year, I do the same thing. So first two years, the new business estimates. So if I Listen. form a new business every two years, I've got an opportunity. Right. <laughs> but if you, after the first two years, the third year, then it's actual. Then it's gross. Yeah. Right. But, it, you, but it, on okay. prior year gross. Yeah, but the, the business is supposed to go back and adjust. Adjust the. And that's and that's a reasonable discussion. It, yeah, but I mean, we we are not verifying whether yeah. the business is adjusting. And that's what's important here. And therefore, we are, we might be putting some money on the table here. It's my understanding that that department, or that section, audit section, has seven employees. Uh, I'm wrong, y'all correct me. Yet, uh, there was some ridiculously low amount of audits that they conducted on the um, commercial personal property taxes, for instance. Um, almost as if those seven people weren't home. Now, if I'm hearing correctly, that still is not being done with regards to some category of tax. I don't know whether it's commercial personal property, whether it's BPO, whether it's meals across tax. the board, meals tax. Uh, 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 is that auditing taking place? This is Drew Wayne Lasseter. I don't know if I'm uh, The audit unit in finance is exactly as you said, it's seven auditors. Um, we get a monthly reporting from that group. Uh, it is much it was even acknowledged in, at the time of the audit by the auditor that the work was improving in that group. They have substantially improved. And while this is an item that we are currently addressing, um, the results is impressive, what they're doing with regard to collections. And I'll share some of that with you in our responses too. Okay, okay. good. You all right? Um, uh, well, I guess I have a question then. I know the recommendation is to have an automated process and uh, whether that's going to, it's going to be addressed anytime soon. Or I guess we need to make a decision because we have been following up on this particular recommendation for a while. This is a 2004 audit. Uh, so whether we decide whether it's not feasible or if it's something that uh, cannot be automated, uh, but 
uh, time, I, I know we spend time every year trying to follow up and uh, it's just uh, it's constant every year and with no results. Uh, does, does the Muniz address this at all? Do you want me to do the responses as we go? Yeah, that would be helpful. Because I'm not going to remember what the first and, one was when I was I, 12. Can yeah. I just ask one thing, and I don't know if Wayne's the right person to ask, but I know that the audit committee had requested that there be a look at the audits that have been done, which ones are relative still today. I'm just saying that because this is a four, and which ones are not. Has that conversation taken place? No, I mean, we haven't received okay. any conversation from CEO's office. Okay. And meanwhile, Mr. Jewell wanted. Okay, I was just business. asking. I was just asking. A well, part of the problem is that information still has not been readily forthcoming. And he's got to pull like pulling cat's teeth to get basic information for routine audits. How can that be improved before you give the other response? Mr. Lassie. How can it be improved? Yeah. Um, it's something that we're working on every day to improve. Uh, we first are doing it by the systems we have. The uh, system that we're talking about right here is the Munis Revenue Billing System. It is still relatively new to the city. We've got a lot to learn, but there isn't a month goes by that we don't have some improvement, whether that's new reports that we know how to get out of it, how to interpret the information we're getting differently or better. So we, we're trying desperately. I don't disagree. I, I, I don't doubt that. I, let's take a step back. Let's take a step back and, 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 and let's determine, is the problem centered around Eunice or the IT part of this, um, or are there other reasons why there's the lag or delay? It's multifaceted. I don't know that I can point to any one thing and say that is the issue. Um, the technology and our familiarity with it is certainly part of it. The integrity of the data that was put into the system initially and what we're having to go through to clean up is certainly a part of it. Um, there, there are many tentacles. And has that been conveyed to the auditor's office? Absolutely. Those, Absolutely. Those, okay. So yeah, we, we actually we did look at the Munis system as a whole, mm -hmm. separately in a separate audit. And last six, last five, recom I mean, five recommendations are related to Munis that I'm going to about to discuss. Okay. A little bit later. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Have you finished your uh, on this one? Oh, that that's a question here. Not so much of a question as you you asked about the responses, and we have, and I don't know if Lamesh, you have discussed the new software, but as yes. part of the um, implementation of the new software, the CAO purchased an audit software that they're currently using for their audits, and it was just started. And as a part of that, it will give you reports, but it allows the administration side to go in and you'll have the, the recommendations in there. We put our response, we attach the documentation, those types of things. So you're getting quicker and more immediate and the documentation is attached in the system. And so we're trying to move forward with being able to um, clean up the process, make it easier. Um, real time status. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Understand. Yeah. And and each department has an audit liaison now, and so they are going to be responsible for ensuring that the recommendations for the individual departments are put in the system. So we are moving forward with trying to clean up the process. Absolutely, I do acknowledge that that what what she said is pretty accurate. Uh, and once this software is fully operational, it has been implemented. It's working well for us, but. What needs to happen is this process kind of kind of needs to kick start. Uh, but you'd admit that's a pretty good step. No, it forward. is. It is, a, it is a very good uh, step towards resolving the recommendations. Great. Great. Excellent. Anything else, Mr. Lance? Yes, sir. Um, the response to that recommendation. Let me first address what Ms. Graziano uh, thought she brought up. We in finance think that any <coughs> audit recommendation that affects revenue is still important regardless of when it was brought up. Um, and it is our intent to address it and respond favorably to it. This is certainly one of those. Um, the recommendation itself was management to provide an automated method for the tax audit unit to track beginners' adjustments. We have done that. We have created in the unit system a, uh, an automated report. That report was finalized earlier this month. 
in December, we got to be sending out the uh, delinquent notices on the business license taxes, and the new billing will take place in January, and it is our intent to use this report at the time those delinquent notices uh, are developed to uh, analyze the, the companies that have been estimating and go back and audit the uh, actual yeah, yeah. estimated amounts. Great. Great. Um, as the recommendation is written and what we've done, we do consider this a closed uh, audit recommendation. So what will happen, we'll, um, we'll follow up. So basically what we'll do is, based on what we has said, and I'm sure that it was submitted through Fox, so we can see what has been done. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the auditors that's in charge of the recommendation will follow up. And what we'll do is we'll do very limited testing, and then We'll close it. If there are any issues that uh, we'll probably contact you or whoever the, the contact person is to say, you know, if there are any differences that we feel that it's not closed, mm -hmm. then we can have a discussion that but we'll follow up. Uh, and, uh, Real quick question. Who who gets to close the recommendation? Uh, the auditor or the auditee? Auditor. Auditor. I only make that statement because as this recommendation is written, we believe we've done what the recommendation asked for. Um, I, I, I will mention that on this tax, you have the ability to audit the current year and three previous years. So there's, it isn't as though those years are lost, even though we just created this report. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, the next three are, are very simple. Um, they're from 2006. Uh, one is, uh, it was an audit done uh, for parking <coughs> citations. And basically, uh, the performance measures were just not measurable. So basically, the recommendation was to develop performance <coughs> measures that could be quantified, could be measured. Uh, so it's just as simple. Um, I must say, when I read this recommendation, I wasn't sure if they were talking about tracking performance measures as they apply to the individual or to the operating unit at large. We track it operating unit at large. Um, the, uh, through a third party vendor that we use, we do get uh, a number of reports and they're available to us as we request them so they can be daily, weekly, with whatever frequency we want them. Those reports, um, track things as the uh, money's bill, the collections that have been made, the, uh, uh, just any facet of delinquencies, any, any, any analysis that we want to do of parking revenue is available on these reports that we get from third party vendor. We are improving our process, what we're doing with those reports uh, as far as the analysis we're doing uh, continually. And there has been some sub substantial improvement made since this audit was initially done. This, um, this particular item was not addressed in the administration audit done earlier this year, but it is definitely something that we're working on and making. And when we say performance measures, are we talking about the uh, performance measures with regard to the software being used, or performance measures with regard to the employees' uh, uh, activities? Yeah, performance measures, as uh, we pointed out, I mean, it could be on an employee level or organization level. I mean, and again, both are important. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, on organizational level, basically you are evaluating whether we are funding this organization for X, Y, Z purpose, whether the organization meeting its purpose in, 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 in an effective manner. Mm -hmm. So what is the measure of effectiveness? That is the performance measure. Yeah. And similar thing goes into the job functions. That, okay, this employee is... <coughs> Uh, is assigned this particular duty uh, and whether that person is doing that duty effectively mm -hmm. and for that what is the measure of that effectiveness so there is a, some set measure okay. so only management can do that that okay what is our expectation from this function or this individual or this position uh, and then ongoing basis <coughs> they are supposed to Evaluate whether the, that function, position, or organization, or is meeting the, the standard. Does interplay with Munis help do that tracking? It does. It does. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 
Now, as this recommendation is written, management should enhance procedures to properly accumulate, etc. We believe we've done that. This is one, the way this audit recommendation is written, I think is a great example of, it is a lot of subjectivity here. Um, it could be my interpretation of this, anybody else who wants to look at its interpretation, and as a result of that, you may never get to the point you can close it. So our interpretation, we believe we have satisfied what it was asked. Okay, what we'll do is I'm going to take a look yeah, at it. We'll show something at the documentation. Okay. So even after you read the content of the report, it is not clear? No, I wouldn't say it's not clear. What, what I thought I said is the way I interpret the report, we believe what we have done is satisfied that recommendation as it relates to that audit. But if you've got performance measures that everybody's consonant with, and we're measuring what we agreed to measure, uh, there shouldn't be any disagreement. Uh, it should be less interpretation, it seems to me. In the most theoretical sense, I would agree with you. But when you have a recommendation, and I believe internal audit will agree with this, if it's written as this one is written, mm -hmm. there is room for interpretation to the point that I may believe we've done what it's asking for, or someone else may not, or vice versa. And that's a bad rate. Let me say to you, if this audit recommendation came to me today the way it's written, I would never accept it. Because I don't believe it could, I couldn't come to you and say with certainty, I think it's closed and I think anybody looking at it should come to that same conclusion. That's what we're striving for today for the office. At the time of the audit, uh, there, were, there were problems with the, the way the, the performance measures were described. For instance, it says that uh, the goals will stay as an average percentage of time spent on the activity to accomplish the goal, uh, which is not a reasonable measure to quantify. Uh, the idea was to have, that's why I said more reasonable, uh, because in order to have a good performance measure, you, are, you should be able to quantify and report, okay, uh, we have a call center. We have performance measures for the call center that, that can be quantified, not necessarily uh, something that is subjective, that is not, you cannot put a number to it. So that, to me, that's a performance measure. And I think that's what we were going to when we issued that recommendation to, to have a more reasonable uh, performance measures, not to have something that cannot be quantified. Can, this, could it have been more definitely part of it? This is where the interpretation comes into play. I agree with what you said on the call center. It's more like a manufacturing widget sort of environment. Mm -hmm. This is not, it doesn't lend itself to that, in my opinion. Well, it just seems to me if there are pre audit consultations, uh, clarity ought to be arrived at those pre audit consultations, should it not? If you have been presented with the measurable items, it seems that those consultations could get uh, get rid of any any ambiguity. I think we do a much but better now, job. Now you were thrown into that position, so that uh, way after 04, so we we're not going to put all that on you. I think that's part of what, what we, when we go back and look at an audit that was done in 06. Mm -hmm. If you think of how many directors of yeah. finance we have <laughs> yeah, had yeah, yeah. from yeah. 06 to today that perhaps the interpretation in 06 was very clear. Correct. But this is 2012. It's, uh, sure. I think that's part of the problem. Yes. Yes. Okay. So again, I mean, on this particular thing, when you submit the documentation, we will have a dialogue. Okay. Good. Okay, the next one related, uh, recommendation number nine, uh, it deals with uh, a policy uh, for delivery <coughs> collection. Uh, when the audit was performed, there were three, I uh, believe that, that we selected 10 items and three of those had um, collected money due to the city. Uh, so when the auditor went in, uh, there was no evidence of any attempt to collect. Uh, but and that's not according to the policy. So basically, the recommendation were to adhere to the policy in, uh, in the detailed procedures for the collection of the labor taxes and fees. Also, to create a law to include in the procedures uh, a list of dates and actions taken. Because there was just, 
even if it was done, we were not able to tell whether there was any action taken to try and collect. Mm. And that's according, that's just adherence to the policy. Mm. This item was included uh, in the most recent revenue administration audit. And our response would be, um, the department's delinquent collection policy was most recently updated in March of this year uh, on delinquent taxes. We are currently in the process of sending out delinquent notices um, in, in compliance with the policy. We're planning to turn over delinquent accounts. And, and this, I believe, relates to the whole tax we're still talking about. No, this relates to the parking citation. Okay. It's the same audit. Uh, I'm clear on that point. But anyway, our policy at large, the policy has been revised recently. We we are operating in compliance with that policy as we've written. We are right now, um, with the aid of a <coughs> consultant, going through a process looking at all of our collection efforts for all tax types, both current collections and delinquent. And we are going to have, uh, probably within the next 30 days, some pretty strong recommendations for the DCAO to improve those processes. And do we have, do we have persons or person whose job it is to bird dog the uh, delinquencies? Absolutely. Uh, persons, that's their job, and they interface with the third party collection agencies? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. And, and those groups vary by tax type. And, and is that where um, uh, tax penalties or late penalties are applied uh, and collected? They are applied by the billing system itself, depending on the parameters of billing that are put in. Okay. But the collection efforts are certainly uh, manned in those areas. Okay. okay, next five recommendations are uh, concerning Munich's audit. Uh, this audit was done in 2010. Uh, the first recommendation is require revenue administration division to use systems functionality to develop appropriate tools and measures to assist in managing this the division. From what Wayne explained pre previously, it seems like now they are using the system more than what it was used back then. Uh, so again, I mean. This seems like something that we need to come together and kind of discuss this because uh, uh, recent development probably might address this recommendation. Do you have anything to add? The, uh, our, our response would be we are using community's functionality as, as um, Dimesh pointed out. We use it more every month. We get better at it. Uh, we are in the process right now of doing a software upgrade on the Minus system. Unfortunately, when we got ready to do that, we realized we had to do a hardware upgrade. So mm -hmm. that, we got that done there. We're doing the software upgrade. Benefits will come from that with the um, efficiencies of the, the upgrade. But a number of reports, as Himesh pointed out, that we didn't have the last time there was a look at this by the auditors. We, we do have reports now on uh, collections, receivables, aging, uh, lockbox overpayments, and so forth. So it is it is an open item, <coughs> but it's one that we're making good progress on. And Okay, the next item is... Stop. Is, is the technology keeping up with those various functionalities you <coughs> just mentioned? I mean, we're, we're reasonably keeping up with that stuff? We are, we are beginning to do a better job than we have been. Uh, I know we're ramping up, and we get into the system so the system can help us, but that takes a lot of work. It does. And obviously some expenses along the way if you're discovering, well, we need some hard, hardware upgrades and all this other stuff. So, um, uh, but anyway, y'all yeah, got a good eye. And this revenue billing system is not part of the ERP project that we hear a lot about. Mm -hmm. This is a separate system that will not be replaced by uh, the Rapids ERP mm -hmm. project. So we're, we're needing to keep this one in, in current hands. I'm gonna have to come sit down with one of y'all and, and, and get an education. I'm here in Rapids, I'm here in Munis, I'm here in Earp, I'm here in Wyatt Earp, and everybody, everything else. So I need an education on what the abs have y'all talking about. ERP and Rapids are synonymous. Okay. They're the same system. Okay. 
Munis is a system where they collect the revenue and they account for that revenue. Now that system eventually will talk to Rapid and uh, update the data of all the revenue collected back to the general ledger in, in, the, in Rapids. Good. Go right ahead. Uh, next recommendation is update and complete the finance BCP. BCP stands for Business Continuation Plan, Continuity Plan. Now, for minutes, what it <coughs> means is that uh, if for some reason, by disaster or anything, something happens to the system and everything shuts down, how do we continue the business? So we should have a plan for every automated system. And uh, again, I mean, a, a draft plan was completed for Munich in 2007. Uh, this recommendation is still open. Again, I mean, <coughs> finance, it may not be everything in, in finance's control because all the departments business continuity plan ties into the central business continuity plan for the city. However, that business continuity plan has been in works of developing for some time. And, uh, You've been kind. <laughs> Come on there. So, Come if, right here. but that is very critical because if something happens to the city system, say if we have a tornado or whatever right. happens, uh, and our system are shot, then we need to have means to continue our business and therefore we need to know what to do. Uh, so that is extremely critical. And again, I mean, last time we had checked, neither the, B, uh, the central business continuity plan was updated or completed. So therefore, the departmental business continuity plan or not completed. Mm. And this is the issue for every department. This is the same issue. So, so you want to provide some status? The, you're going to have to forgive me. Here goes more of the alphabet suit. Um, the finance department does have a coup plan, which is a continuity of operations. And internal audit has explained to me that the coup plan really addresses the systems that give you your operations. The BCP is the process by which you use the systems and get the job done. Um, the finance department has a coup plan that was um, reviewed by internal audit in March of 2008. <coughs> At that time, internal audit acknowledged that our plan is sort of a mutation of those two documents into one. Um, there is more work to be done on that. It was the one that we have was reviewed um, circulated in, by senior management and some element of training done on it. However, with all the changes in personnel we've had, we do acknowledge that more training and exposure and review is necessary. So the document exists. It is not a final document, but we're on the way in to uh, Amesh's point. Once the department gets theirs, um, and I put on my utility hat for a moment, utility has theirs, all those eventually will have to come together to a city plan. We need to a master plan, yeah. Um, I haven't seen hide nor have it. Um, and what we've got from, uh, well, I won't get into that. I'll just say that uh, my question is, can each of these various departments complete their facet of the plan disjunctively where it can then be fused with everything else uh, I think, and we don't have a problem with that? No, I think that's what they are doing. What coup plan that they, they he, he is talking about it is also known as a disaster recovery plan. Yes. And uh, what that is, is that is to recover the system data. When, if disaster comes into, uh, I mean, this disaster occurs, then how we are going to get the system data back so that we are going to be operational? Business continuity plan is a lot larger. Mm -hmm. It will also include that, okay, how we are going to do our business, meaning a, without system, if 
citizens needs to have some service, how we continue providing this system. Meanwhile, if there's a revenue to be collected, what manual system we are going to be using to collect this revenue and properly account for, and so on and so forth. So, uh, disaster recovery plan is a part of business continuity plan. But again, there is, it is critical that city has a business continuity plan for the entire city. Uh, is, is the administration aware of those distinctions you just made? Uh, I think so. Right. Now, um, it, the fact is not lost on us in this room, I'm sure, that we just last year had an earthquake 35 miles away from us. That could have been us. It could have been worse. Uh, and I, this is not to fool around with. Uh, we need to pull it all together as soon as possible. And, uh, uh, it just seems to me, if there are difficulties getting from here to there, then we ought to be able to say it in an honest, open way and say, hey, look, uh, I'm, I'm sort of lagging behind. I might need a little over here. Let me have a little over there. But what I'm hearing is foot dragging and stonewall, not necessarily from your department, but from various other departments, as if somehow the auditor is trying to play gotcha. Well, we don't play gotcha. These issues get in the newspaper because you've got open meetings with the audit committee. The media is in the room. So the auditor didn't go spill the beans. Uh, the committee is an open committee meeting. So uh, that sensitivity seems to have been pervasive. I get a sense, I feel that it's beginning to melt, hopefully. And uh, uh, this is hugely important. Yeah, we, we do consider having business continuity plan as a critical risk for the city. Yeah. Where's the meeting? Tell them I'm coming now. Tell them I'm coming. I'm on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. We've we, we got a 6 o'clock meeting that pops up. Okay. No, um, we have finish a 6 o'clock meeting. <laughs> I'll finish it quicker. It's all right. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, the next two recommendations are kind of tied to the business continuity plan because it's, it was uh, uh, testing documents and it involves the training. But if you don't have business continuity plan, you cannot do the, the next, those, year. next year. Yeah. So uh, that is kind of tied very closely with the business continuity plan. So this essentially is, is coming up with ways and means of doing business with one hand tied behind your back, hopefully, and not too by and large, this is what we're talking about here, because uh, the, the business of the city still got to go on, sure. um, and uh, we need that plan as soon as possible. Uh, we will also work with the CAO uh, and, and see how all this stuff is tied together, sure. um, and we'll, we'll just keep at it. Thank you. Go ahead. The, Anything else? The fifth recommendation on Venus is update formal policies and procedures as well as desktop procedures for all real estate activities and develop a guideline for a periodic review. Now, when this audit was conducted, only real estate module was implemented. Therefore, <coughs> it just addressed the real estate activities. Uh, and let me explain what desktop pro procedures are. Desktop procedures are like user manual for a system that after this field, enter this field and uh, go to the next screen and then enter whatever the top information you want to enter. Mm -hmm. So that is called desktop uh, uh, procedures. Instructional prompts. Yes, so that was not existing at that time. And uh, again, uh, there was no formal policies and procedures for the operation of Munis as, as a whole. So that was the recommendation to develop those two sets of policies. And where are we with it? The uh, policies and procedures were most recently updated in March of this year uh, for this area. It's really an ongoing effort uh, as we improve our processes, these procedures need to be updated. 
but as of March of this year, we had our most recent update, and we are in operation in agreement with those at this time. And those updates are being shared with the audit? As they request them, absolutely. Well, that's uh, the new pause process goes into that track, and you have an opportunity to communicate mm -hmm. a lot sooner than end of the year, so that we can close the recommendation a lot sooner than end of the year. <coughs> All right, last recommendation. Uh, this was this recommendation was made for the grand solid, and that really does not put in, in exactly in finance, but finance is kind of kind of tied into it. Uh, and again, I mean, this may have some revenue, uh, some cost. I mean, not cost, uh, fiscal impact mm -hmm. on the city. What happens is. Whenever we get a grant from federal government or state government, <clears throat> in addition to the, the grant money, they will allow you indirect cost allowance. And indirect cost allowance based, based on everything that we do from the administration until the department, department management. Some portion of the cost is gets allocated to, to that particular grant because all those resources are spent in administration of that grant. Okay, I'm with you. Right. So, and there is a circular 73, again, don't make it a lot technical here, but uh, uh, the Office of Management and, uh, uh, what is the OMB? Management and Budget. Budget. Yeah. Um, they have come up with this you know, circular 73, and that is what widely used for calculating this overhead uh, indirect cost rate. Right. And when we did this audit, the city was not calculating indirect cost rate. So that is the money we are putting on the table for the everything. Now, as the time passes, the amount of grants that we get kind of diminishes anyway. So, but again, I mean, that is eight dollars that we possibly can get. So, we were recommending that uh, develop a indirect cost recovery where allowable and maintain documentation as to how the rate was derived so that if federal government or state government wants to come in, we can justify that this was the methodology <coughs> in accordance with this particular circular, and therefore this cost is allowable, and therefore we can be allowed our dollars. Is this somewhat analogous to uh, schools' failure to uh, pursue the uh, Medicare reimbursement? Uh, that there are dollars available uh, in the grant for indirect costs, administrative costs, overhead. Similar. Uh, we're not drawing it down, or we're it, not? It is similar. Yeah. Meaning that the grant allows you to collect more, but we do not do that. It is very similar. While so, you're talking grants, any chance uh, you've got uh, a thumbnail on how we're doing with grants? And somehow I just get the sense that we're leaving jillions on the table. Uh, we're not going to be so long, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we do get, I don't know how much we do we get in grants. Oh, free. <laughs> but substantial, I mean, tens of millions of dollars. In indirect cost rate on that, I don't know what is it. In every case, it will be a different allowance. Mm -hmm. But we could be putting on the table hundreds of thousands, of, or not hundreds of thousands, several thousands of dollars. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I don't have a quantify. But whatever it is, it, it is additional revenue for the city. Sure, sure. Uh, Wayne, is any sense that we've got uh, ample staffing in, in the grant department? Do we know? I think we do. And, and I want to describe the role that finance has played in, in this. Mm -hmm. We in finance have worked or, and continue to work with our external vendor, PMG Maximus. That's a group that does our allocated cost study <coughs> for the general fund. We worked with them to develop a rate proposal for the three departments that have the largest grants outside of utilities, and that would be police, justice services, and public works. 
they did develop a rate proposal that we've shared with those departments. That is the document that would give them the rate that they could use to apply for administrative cost reimbursement. Um, I don't know exactly what the departments have done with those, but uh, they were done last year. We're going to uh, have the new ones this year. The cost of the city is about $1,000 per year per department, but that's pretty insignificant based on the, when you look at the money that they could get that. Mm -hmm. okay. That must be something basic. Well, last year the uh, rate studies were done on those three departments, and this year will be the second year. So share with us, and then we can look at it. And maybe I was going to say that. that is equally important is what is the department doing. That's right, exactly. That is significantly germane to some of the stuff he's looking for. So uh, you may be ahead of the game on that one. Um, anything else? Any questions? Good. Any comments? Good. Any smart aleck remarks? <laughs> Trying to help you here, Mr. George. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> All right. Well, um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wayne, thank you. Yes, sir. Let me see. Uh, I feel a lot better than I did a few months ago. Huh? Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Uh, we've got one last item before we get out of here, I believe, except for a staff report. Uh, and that is this uh, uh, vacancy. What do we got? Okay, we got? In terms of your vacancy, hey, Ron. I do need a little bit of clarification, and I think I think y'all two gentlemen can help me out. Um, for the city personnel board, we have one reappointment. Lawanda Sean Thrower, she has been on it previously, and she would like to be reappointed. Personnel board? Mm -hmm. I'm not prepared to act on that, are you? No, I mean, I would prefer to defer at this point to next month. that, please? The other, the other two things I would like to make you aware of on the Richmond Retirement System Board of Trustees, we do have two vacancies. They are mayoral appointments. I have talked with Suzette Denslow. I talked with her on the 7th. She is aware of them. One is a gentleman that is no longer with the city. The other one is one of the staff, and she said she understood that he could remain until a suitable replacement came on board, and he expired in 08, and I explained to her, I thought that was true. I did believe that. However, when the citizens look at it, and they see that his term has expired, I think we need to try to resolve that issue, either by way of them writing a letter to reappoint him or find someone else, and she agreed. So He's she serving said, now <laughs> in an expired position since 08? Yeah. Oh, nine. Oh, nine. It's a what dog in that cat. And so I am, I, am I am pursuing that. Thank you. And uh, she is working with me. We're going to work on that and see what we can do. Also, in June, at the June meeting, Mr. Tyler, I believe in terms of sister cities, you made the statement they were not going to be appointing additional people. It was on the audio. I made sure of that. But I wanted to make sure and confirm that before I state that we are filled at this time. Well, I mean, again, there may be slots that are available, but in my attending the meetings, I have not heard anyone coming forward to say they want those slots filled. Okay. Um, what they try to do is find individuals who have a passion for a city that we are sister cities to, so that, that you fill those in appointments with those individuals as opposed to putting someone on there and then trying to figure out a way to make it happen. I just wanted to make sure I understood your statement yeah. so that if anything did come about, I could clarify. Well, <coughs> and the uh, only other thing that we have is the minutes of the July 26th meeting. So move to approve. Move to approve. Our second uh, minutes are approved. Uh, Ms. Davis, what do we have? Anything else? Just on, on in your staff report and um, it talks about the full quarter vacancy and turnover rate. That is on page 10. Mm -hmm. um, I can review it quickly, but. Um, Fourth quarter, that's, yeah, that, and that's is social services. Yes. And is it specifically uh, protective services to me? Or is this social services? 
system wide across the board. Are you asking me about number, 20, number 27 by the department number, which is at the bottom of the sheet? Right. This is social services for the city. Yeah, for the whole department. For the whole yes. department, not just protective services, yeah. adult and child protective services. No. All right. Yeah. And, then okay. I, and I think you were talking about in our other meetings, yes. we talked about CPS was a 17. Correct. It's yes. the whole department. Good. Okay. But um, when you go and look at that sheet, uh, the ones that are in red have this highest turnover rate. And there, the entire city rate has uh, turnover rates down a little as compared to the FY12 rates at 8.4, the difference of 0.9%. And then Justice Services, of course, had a drop in the turnover of 7.4 to 8.4 uh, as it relates to closing the detention center. But these other departments that are in red have had uh, a higher turnover rate than some of the other departments. And as you see them noted here, because others may not have it before, is Animal Care Control, DCAO, Human Services Office, Fire, or the non storm officers, uh, Justice Services, and the Minority Business Development on the four that were housed. And so that resulted at the bottom of this 8.4. So these are significant, but you did not read um, uh, all of the law. Yes, I, did. On I think I, I made a mistake and just covered it too quickly. Uh, I didn't cover all of this, but I saw that. It's pretty big. Pretty big number. Well, that bears out to what Mr. Law has said to us about the fact that he has people raiding his department. Oh, for he did say that. Yes, yeah. he did. And that's why he wanted an increase for his right. staff. But yeah. Right. Um, people were stealing our good people. Right. Correct them up. Mm. We might be able to use that one. Hipsy, but few know. And human resources is high. Yeah. And I noticed planning development is pretty high also. Well, this is useful. This is helpful. Well, and that we will study that. Yeah, yeah, and as Mr. Jewell pointed out, um, overall for an agency like social services, it's eight or four, I think it says here. Mm -hmm. I mean, a 7.1 over here. But then when you look at individual departments, it gets a little bit higher. Right, so and I, I think. I imagine it, some of these, they would have been that. And again, yeah. it's within it's the department. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's, it's unfair to look at social services in relationship to animal control because animal control is one department, self-contained, 12 to 15 people, whatever it is, social services of 400. Yes. And so I think perhaps a little more breakdown yeah. is in order yeah. so that we can drill into what where are the issues? And the same is true for justice services. You have yeah. employees of about 300 mm -hmm. versus, as he said, the number. Isn't that, that many? Mm -hmm. They have about 300. Yeah, just so it's huge. It's, it's yeah. not, give or take one or two. Mm -hmm. It's not that many. Well, they have fewer now without the tension side, correct? So they have um, far fewer now. So about um, 60 to 100 people may have dropped off, and I can go down. We'll pray over this. In the meantime, we will, uh, if there is no further business, we will adjourn this meeting. Meeting's adjourned. Thank you, Madam Clerk. I'm not going to stand in your way. You better hurry. Hey.